So then uh, today, I will discuss about the uh, forward backward algorithm for CDC. So it can actually continue in the next week, by the way. Uh, it will not be finished only with this week. So first, uh, the, we uh, the, the stayed in the uh, HMM part for a while. And now uh, the, we move to the end-to-end -end ASR uh, the, and one of the, uh, the, the application CTC. And the reason I kind of put in the CTC uh, right after uh, HMM forward backward is that there are some similarity of how to solve uh, the, uh, the CTC and the HMM and so on, especially for the training part. However, there are several differences as well. So I will try to kind of emphasize the similarity and the uh, difference uh, in this kind of lecture. So first, uh, the most of the part is kind of recap of the, the what CTC is. So uh, the maybe many people still remember, or if you I for, if you forgot forget, uh, the please uh, the check the detail uh, of the CTC uh, the. Uh, the formulation in the lecture uh, the five, yeah. So uh, the everything CTC attention uh, the the RN transducer HM everything starting from the PW given law that I believe now you guys remember and they uh, understand this. Uh, and then the, the CTC uh, introducing the latent variable uh, which is the, the alignment variable. That is very similar to the, the HMM part. And then uh, PW given O is uh, the, uh, the represented by Z, uh, the all possible uh, the alignment variable that actually corresponding to uh, the producer, the, uh, the uh, W. And then uh, the summation over PZ given O. So this is uh, uh, the CTC, uh, the objective function. And it is very different from HMM in some sense, right? HMM first is mostly phoneme, uh, but the CTC case is directly model the, uh, the, uh, the token sequence. And the uh, HMM cases, it's gonna be actually always uh, the, uh, the generative, right? It's a generative model. And then we set a Gaussian or Gaussian mixture to model it. But this one is a discriminative model. Directly try to providing the probability of the alignment. So mostly these two are, are the difference. And of course, the other difference is the topology, which uh, the, the, we have also the, uh, discussed in the, uh, the uh, alignment part. HMM is generally kind of a very uh, the, uh, the simple uh, the diamond. And the RN transducer is uh, the more simple, right? Just kind of a lattice. And the CTC is a little bit complicated. Uh, due to the kind of blank symbol and the skipping and so on, which is included in the uh, weekly assignment form. Okay, so uh, the given this uh, the uh, the, uh, the the probability, we can actually also use this as an objective function. So similar to the maximum likelihood EM algorithm, we also setting the likelihood and then try to uh, the uh, maximizing the parameters and solve, right? Let's do the same strategy. However, uh, the, just a kind of one note, usually uh, we use the loss instead of the, uh, the, uh, the score. So it becomes negative. And then this is also uh, the usually taking the log, which is uh, the same as the, the, the uh, maximum likelihood the EMR version cases. So, the, the previously we set the the, the, uh, the argmax, but the, from now I uh, the use the argmin, but it's basically almost same. Just you know, uh, the the, uh, the including the uh, the the minus sign or plus sign, and then taking it to the mean or maximum. Just kind of the same problem, but I I just kind of follow the convention of the loss function based optimization. And the yeah the uh, the. Problem is to uh, the solve uh, this equation and getting the kind of uh, the parameter, uh, model parameter and so on. However, this is uh, the, uh, uh, no longer uh, the, the, uh, we can use the, uh, the EM algorithm uh, because this function home is very complicated. 
So actually, we cannot use the EM algorithm to solve it. Instead, uh, let's try to use the uh, gradient descent. Uh, this is the, the uh, minimizing the loss. So then it becomes a gradient descent. Huh? If the, we maximizing the, uh, the, the objective score, it becomes the gradient ascent. So I will have a more explanation in the gradient descent, but basically a gradient descent is a quite simple two-step. First, let's get a derivative of loss. And then a uh, second, adjust the parameter uh, based on the gradient. And then in this adjusting uh, can be uh, performed by using the, uh, the learning rate and so on. And the learning rate has a lot of kind of uh, the, the tuning, uh, the, the uh, possibility by using uh, uh, the uh, various uh, the optimization techniques and so on. But the basic form of the uh, gradient descent is taking the derivative and then uh, adjust the original parameter uh, based on the gradient. So it is very simple uh, compared with the EM algorithm. It's EM algorithm is actually using the auxiliary function, right? And then indirectly optimizing the parameter. But now this is direct, directly using the loss function uh, of this one. And then uh, they are taking the gradient and then uh, updating the model and then doing this kind of a process again and again. So this is a gradient descent uh, part. Uh, and then uh, the, now that it's actually important part, it's a derivative. How to get the derivative and so on. And here, uh, people usually are using the chain rule to uh, the, taking the kind of a derivative uh, to complicate the function. So this part is actually probably the most important part uh, in terms of the kind of uh, the functionality uh, of the gradient descent compared with the uh, the, the maximum likelihood EM algorithm. So some of the algorithm, uh, the, the, like for example, Gaussian and so on, after taking the derivative, we can get the equal zero and get the, uh, the cross form solution, right? Which is the uh, the uh, the weekly assignment, uh, uh, the one of the question. But uh, however, unfortunately, we actually cannot get this kind of cross form anymore for most of the kind of complicated functions. And the CTC is actually applied to this very complicated functions. And I will explain a little bit more about the, uh, the chain rule. Uh, the, but again, this part, uh, I will have an additional lecture uh, that probably after the fall break to have a more kind of understanding of this part if people are not familiar with. But anyway, chain rule is uh, the use for the composition of the function. Uh, uh, and then this kind of derivative can be represented as a derivative uh, of the uh, the one of the function and the other function and so on. So this kind of a chain rule uh, is uh, very important uh, to uh, the, uh, deal with the complicated function. But uh, what is a complicated function? Uh, many of the functions are generally complicated for me. <laughs> like for example, Gaussian exponential minus uh, the x square, right? <laughs> this is very complicated. And uh, taking the derivative is actually uh, the generally uh, the, the not easy, but the people are using the uh, chain rule, I believe, right? And then they're solving it. Uh, and the sigmoid function, uh, the also uh, this is uh, the, the taking the, uh, the chain rule uh, to uh, the get the derivative. So uh, the basically many of the complicated functions are represented by the composition of the functions. And then we can actually take a derivative by using the chain rule, and then uh, they, they get the kind of a derivative of very complicated function. And then we can get the, uh, the, uh, the, the, this, uh, the, the, the adjustment, and then we can update the parameters and so on. Compared with EM algorithm, there is no kind of guarantee that we converge it to some point and so on. But uh, uh, the, this is a uh, quite a powerful approach because now we can apply to any of the functions that can get a derivative. 
Okay, so now uh, let's try to take the derivative of the CTC loss. So again, we starting from this minus log uh, the, the uh, posterior distribution, okay? But this one is still very complicated. How we kind of our model is represented as our uh, model parameter is not clear. So we can actually uh, using the uh, the uh, equation that uh, that we derived uh, in the CTC uh, the factorization part uh, substituted uh, to this kind of uh, part. Okay, and then if we take the derivative, uh, that we are happy. However, the issue is similar to the EM algorithm. We have a summation over the sequence. So in general, this part uh, is uh, very kind of uh, expensive. And then uh, we can actually not take the normal uh, gradient descent in the CTC case. And then here, uh, similar to the EM algorithm, HMM EM algorithm, we can actually using the uh, forward backward algorithm. So this lecture, I will try to kind of uh, give you the connection of from here to how to kind of uh, the connect the uh, similar uh, the, the, the formulation to the forward backward uh, the variables, uh, forward backward algorithm and so on. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the, the try to anyway uh, take the derivative of this loss function. So uh, the, to do this kind of a, a loss function here and then model parameter to get the gradient, uh, we should actually use a chain rule uh, quite often. And one of the very uh, the useful uh, chain rule is to uh, the, the, uh, get the kind of a derivative by using the, uh, this uh, the, the function YWT. And what is YWT? Uh, this is actually the, uh, the, the, the typical uh, the neural network output of the, uh, the, 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 of the, uh, the posterior distribution for time t and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, token uh, the w. So the some of you may know the uh, sigmoid fun uh, sorry uh, the softmax function is generally defined to uh, get the uh, the probability of the uh, the, uh, the all kind of uh, categories right. So we actually using this kind of uh, the probability as a kind of uh, intermediate to get the derivative. This is a kind of a very uh, typical, uh, the, by the way, trick to uh, the, uh, solve the complicated problem. So please also remember uh, this intermediate representation. By the way, again, this part is not included in the uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the midterm exam. So <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do not have to seriously solve this right now. <laughs> And uh, by using this uh, the, the uh, posterior uh, the representation, and then using as the intermediate, uh, we could actually uh, the, uh, the, uh, make the derivative uh, of this uh, log part, and then uh, the, this log part, uh, the, the, by taking the, this log part, we can have a three factor. One is that PW given O, it actually becomes the, the denominator. This is a kind of a basic uh, the, the, uh, derivative for uh, the log operation, right? And then we actually have to tackle the, uh, the YWT uh, given this uh, the, uh, entire posterior. And this is actually quite difficult. Uh, and this is the target uh, uh, the, uh, of lecture today. And the, another part, uh, this part is actually very well known uh, the neural network operation. So in this uh, the current lecture, I will skip how to de uh, derive the detail. Although I will uh, the include it in the, uh, in the, uh, the uh, later lectures. But anyway, please uh, the understand that this part is a kind of, again, typical neural network uh, the derivative. So this, the, since this is the, actually the, the uh, softmax, so softmax uh, derivative is actually quite uh, popular. Uh, so people actually can get it easily. But uh, this part is very complicated. 
And I will explain about how to kind of uh, the, uh, deal with uh, this derivative uh, the, from the uh, following lectures. Okay, so to do that, I will explain first about the CTC uh, torus again. And many of the kind of a part is review, but then the, I will also ex, uh, the introduce a forward backward variables uh, for CTC. So uh, this is a, just a recap of the CTC torus. Uh, by the way, this is uh, the answer for the, uh, the uh, weekly assignment for. <laughs> um, so the, the right axis is T. And the, uh, the, we have our, uh, the token sequence, right, S, E, E. But in CTC, uh, we also actually including the blank in the, uh, the beginning and the, the between the, uh, the token. And actually, instead of uh, the using the, this uh, the, the token sequence, in CTC, we actually uh, the deal with this auxiliary uh, token sequence uh, the aug augmented by the, uh, the blank symbol. So now I want to kind of emphasize that the, the, the token sequence is W, uh, W1 to Wj. In this case, is W1 equal S, W2 equal E, W3 equal E, and J, large J equal three lengths, right? But in this uh, the new token sequence, it becomes 2j plus one uh, the, the lengths because we always kind of inserting the, uh, the, the uh, blank symbol. And instead of uh, using this token sequence, we are using this augmented new token sequence as our kind of a discussion, okay? So this is also a little bit complicated part. So please uh, the, the, uh, do not confuse it. Okay, then this is, we actually already uh, discussed. So CTC is taking a summation all over the sequence Z that is kind of included in this kind of a graph. So Z can be this, uh, the, the, uh, the path or this, this path or many of the passes that kind of are uh, represented by this uh, the Z. So let's uh, the, the, the use always this as an example. And please uh, the, uh, the, the remember the summation over the all possible Z means that summation of all other possible uh, the Z are uh, represented uh, based on this graph. Is that clear? I think so, yeah. And I just, sorry about the handwriting, <laughs> but uh, uh, the, this kind of region corresponding to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the region that uh, Z exists. And then the, uh, the probability W given O theta is uh, represented by this uh, the, the other probability summation. Okay, so again, our target is this one, right? And this is a one way of the form, but it's still not so much easy for us to handle because it's had a summation over the sequence. Now we actually focus on one of the point. Let's say, for example, t equals three and i equals four here. Not j, by the way, okay, i, which is augmented space. And then let's think about the occupation probability here, oh, sorry. That is uh, what we introduced in the HMM. So people may now understand the, uh, the meaning of this kind of occupation probability. Uh, that is, for example, uh, the consider from beginning to at this point, uh, we consider all possible uh, subsequence to reach to here. Okay, so and then I write it at uh, this kind of region, and then at, uh, from here to the end, we also consider this. Uh, the, the all possible uh, the sequence 
that starting from this point to the uh, two of the end point, okay? This is actually quite similar to the forward and the backward uh, variable. So uh, the, let me summarize this other uh, variable, uh, the occupation probability here. This is actually represented by the summation over the, uh, the one to t minus one subsequence and the summation over t plus one to t, uh, the, the sequence, right? So uh, the, this is the definition of this, the occupation probability, which is slightly different uh, uh, from the uh, definition uh, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the occupation probability appeared in the EM algorithm, but it's quite similar. And I think uh, that it's quite intuitive. So let's focus on this, uh, the occupation probability. And then we also have a lot of example. Uh, the, for example, if we consider here, uh, the t equal to three and the uh, equal to five, uh, that we consider the uh, the subsequence of from here to here. Unfortunately, from here to here, it doesn't reach. So this one is actually only one pass. But the other uh, the backward part is actually uh, a lot of other possibility. And the same uh, in these cases uh, that we also have our uh, the, the uh, writing with with a subsequence summation of the subsequence to write a kind of occupation probability here and here uh, and so on. Okay, and then uh, let's try to kind of connect this occupation probability uh, to the uh, our kind of target PW given or theta. So for this, uh, what we will do is. Let's try to consider to get the summation over all this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, variables existing in the trellis and at the same time. So uh, the, if we take this kind of uh, the summation, uh, what's happening? And uh, this is actually uh, the uh, computed by considering the previous all kinds of uh, cases, right? And I actually put everything, <laughs> yeah, for uh, the, uh, the item and putting all the kind of uh, the, the uh, cases and so on. So this uh, relationship is actually quite important. Uh, uh, by using it, this PW given OCTR was originally obtained by summation over the sequence, right? But now it doesn't have a summation over the sequence. Although, you know, how to get this gamma is a kind of complicated, and which is similar story to what we have done in the other uh, forward, backward, uh, the algorithm and so on. And I will explain a little bit more about this kind of a relationship. So uh, the, actually the, um, original derivative which we are trying to tackle is W each token, okay. However, this uh, the variable is for each node, right? And this is actually different. When it be different, for example, each node can have a multiple token. Uh, sorry, each node in the, the, the same time frame can have a multiple uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the same token occurs at the multiple times. For example, in the case of t equals three, blank occurs uh this time and this time right so i equals three and five <laughs> so this means that the correspondence of the i and the token is not unique so we actually want to have a uh, the, the dependency of the token to get the derivative but currently uh the 
this kind of uh, uh, the uh, node is actually depending on the other uh, position, and that position is uh, that they uh, indicate some of the token, but it can be multiple. So this is a little bit complicated situation. By the way, when t equal four, okay, the answer is uh, the. Four and six, right? Yeah. E occurs twice. And similarly, you know, blank often occurs multiple times. That even here we also have a blank twice. Uh and so on. So uh the, we actually uh the wanted to make some connection uh to the uh the uh this uh the, the gamma uh to the uh the actual uh, the, the token. And then in this case, uh, the how to do that, it is actually quite easy. Uh, we just taking the summation uh, that occurs the same token W. Like for example, uh, in the case of the T equals three and the blank occurs uh, in three and five, and then want to make this value depending on the kind of token, in this case, we just adding two of them, right? By the way, it can be, you know, weighted sum may also happen, but uh, the, the, for this CTC, this part is very simplified. Uh, in the case of the T equal uh, the four and the uh, E, the case of the E, which happened twice, right? In this case, again, we just kind of adding the, this other uh, gamma value. By doing that, now this other gamma depend on the uh, the uh, character a uh, token e, and this other uh, gamma uh, depend on the uh, token uh, blank, uh, and so on. So by using this kind of summation, uh, we can actually uh, the make the this uh, forward vari uh, backward variable gamma. Uh, depending on the uh, the token, and then uh, the actually we can also providing the meaning of this uh, the summation of the gamma for uh, each uh, the token. So this definitely means uh, some kind of a proportional to the occurrence probability of the uh, the, uh, the the token W at the t right because it's some the probability and so on. So let's normalize it. And uh, normalize means that normalize uh, the across a kind of a W and so on. And then this actually becomes this probability. So now uh, this uh, the normalized probability becomes the occupation probability of W uh, at the T. It is just as you know, and a normalization. But anyway, important part is just a kind of, you know, other, how to make this uh, data depending on W, just adding it. And then normalize it, and then it becomes a kind of probability. So uh, the, by doing that, we can actually uh, now have a connection uh, of the PW given O and the other, uh, uh, this, uh, the gamma variable uh, depending on the token. So this is a kind of preparation. After this preparation, we can actually take the derivative. So let's first rewrite uh, this uh, PW uh, given O theta, which is, as uh, the, the I mentioned in the quiz, it can be uh, represented by the, uh, the summation over the uh, the the, uh, the uh, summation over the i, uh, which is the the auxiliary uh, the, the the token sequence including the blank, which is uh, that we have are shown in the quiz, and now this is also further decomposed for each of the uh, the token in the vocabulary, we can actually add a, add a get uh, the, uh, the the summation of the gamma variable 
that other uh, uh, the if we have a multiple times of cars, we just adding. And it doesn't happen, it just can be zero, uh, and so on. So again, now we have our uh, this representation, W given O theta is represented by the uh, the, the, uh, the uh, variable depending on the, uh, the the token W, and also uh, doesn't have a summation uh, over the sequence. So now we actually can take the derivative and then we actually cannot have our summation over the sequence it's because it doesn't include it. So this one is a little bit complicated. So I kind of didn't fully uh, the, uh, the providing the explanation, but basically the, this uh, derivative is uh, represented by this uh, the very simple uh, the, the derivative, a uh, 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 very simple uh, equation. So YWT, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, one over the y, y, YWT and the summation of the, uh, the, uh, the gamma variable uh, the, with, res with respect to the uh, index that's showing the kind of a W. And then further actually uh, the introduce the original uh, equation here which is the uh, the derivative over the uh, the um, CTC uh, loss function, and then in uh, the substituting this uh, relationship to uh, this uh, the uh, derivative part, and then uh, this is actually uh, the uh, final uh, part uh, the of uh, today's lecture. So this is the uh, last part. Uh, of the derivative. And it uh, still looks very complicated, uh, but I will explain about each of the component. Uh, first, right side, right factor is again that it's a typically obtained gradient uh, from the softmax. And that is depending on the time frame and the, voc uh, the token W, vocabulary uh, the, the, uh, W. And the left side is actually occupation probability for W, right? So this is actually obtained by the weighted sum uh, of the loss function uh, based on this uh, the, the conventional neural network. So again, without this factor, this is very typical of uh, the multiple uh, the, the uh, neural network. But this uh, the weighted sum is obtained by the, uh, the torus and then getting the kind of occupation probability for each of the kind of a point and so on. This uh, weighted sum is considered, uh, weight is considered when get the derivative and so on. So it is quite intuitive. Uh, if we actually using the uh, information uh, from the torus and getting the weight and then just kind of adjusting the uh, the normal uh, the classifier. So this is actually the uh, answer uh, of the uh, derivative of the CTC. However, uh, it's similar to, again, very similar to the EM algorithm. Uh, we still didn't talk about how to obtain this one, right? And this one is actually obtained based on the forward backward algorithm. Okay, so uh, let me summarize the, um, uh, the CTC uh, the training. Again, unfortunately, we cannot find an EM algorithm due to a complex equation form. So we use a gradient descent algorithm. And then uh, the, to do that, we actually use a lot of chain rules. However, uh, the uh, CTC, summation, uh, CTC uh, objective function has a lot of summation over the sequence. So similar to the, um, the EM algorithm, we can find the occupation probability and then uh, the getting the derivative uh, efficiently. However, how to compute this one will be in the, uh, the following lecture. Okay, so that's it in the CTC uh, the objective function. Any questions? Okay, thank you so much.